Seeing none, Madam Clerk, next item, please. Under workshops, A, the 2019-2020 Council Goals Update. Thank you. Ms. Carrier. Thank you. And good afternoon, Honorable Mayor and City Council. Brianna Carrier with the City Manager's Office. And we'll get our uh, presentation up here for a second. Uh, this is your essentially pulse check on the goals so far. So these were adopted August 14th of this year. We're a couple months into the fiscal year now. And a little bit of background as well. So we had the request to bring this update to you. And as well as during the process of creating this new iteration of goals, we had the desire to bring this process for consideration a bit earlier. So a bit earlier in the planning year. And we're in kind of a funny year right now. We're a little compressed uh, with this being the first year that we're doing this. So this presentation, the point of it is to really go over the highlights and things that have been accomplished so far. So we'll get into that. Here are your eight overarching city council goals. This is the language that council developed. And uh, I wanted to provide you with this bit of snapshot here. So I wanna walk through this grid. If you look over at the overarching goals, there's eight of them there on the left. Each of those overarching goals came with an action item. And those are the things council desired be measurable and be things that over the next couple of fiscal years we could accomplish and strike off the list. So you have our action items there, that overarching goal, and then those action items then provided direction to our departments. And that's where we have our department activities. So you can see the number of department activities total there at the bottom is 88. And uh, for the purposes of our presentation, we're not gonna do all 88, but I did have a lot of help from our department staff in coming up with this supplementary report for you. So there is some detail on all of those items here. So if you have further questions, I uh, might wanna flip through as we're going through here. And with the percentages over here on the side, again, we're a couple months in, but it's good to report that we have most of these items in the either in process or complete category. So unless we have any further questions there, we'll go ahead and get started on some of these highlights. And the first one, again, these are all very specific to the city council goals. So what was in this document? Number one, quality public safety services. Action item 1.1 is that item to hire 100 additional officers in the next three years. So what is complete so far is we have our training academy made possible through public safety vital services measure funding. And we have that space now to have our own academies when we need them. And so that academy is done. It's actually gonna get additional space within the next month with an auxiliary building. So that's another add on there. And some things that uh, we've done a lot of work on and are really close to completion is we have our August Academy going, going, going to graduation in January. So that's 27 officers who've made it most of the way through and they'll be on the streets after that. Following uh, those officers, actually we have the next Winter Academy starting December 9th. So that's very soon. We currently have 35 job offers out for those trainees. And assuming most of those officers make it through, we have the 27 uh, graduating in January. Feel pretty comfortable with hitting that goal of 100 within the next uh, three years. And of course, there'll be another summer academy uh, next July as well. And then not only the academies themselves, but our efforts in recruitment. So human resources, of course, has been really busy. Uh, they have widened where they're advertising. The police department also has a dedicated recruitment team. Uh, and they go out into the community, they do community fairs, and that's been really successful. And you also have an item on tonight's agenda that will further incentivize recruitment for the police department, so making movement there. Uh, 1.2B there, that action item has to do with response times. So 1.2B is the implementation of the regional radio network, and that process is also underway. We have the RFP out for the implementation of that, and there'll be some tower site tours in early 2020. So that's moving, and of course that is also, I believe it's about a $17 million project that was made possible through public safety vital services measure also. Uh, also with the response times, police and fire dispatcher recruitment, we currently have ha hired on four additional fire dispatchers, two police dispatchers, and staff is also working on ways to further incentivize uh, having more staff come into those positions. 1.3 is the data-driven strategies when it comes to policing. So one of the biggest items lately is the body-worn cameras. So in October, that program was fully approved. The consultant was picked, so the contractor, which is Axon. So we have 210 cameras to be implemented by the end of this year. 
really significant, and then full complement being outfitted by the end of next year. So that's a really, really highlight of uh, police department accomplishments there. Then 1.4a, uh, that actually has to do with the fire department and their certification. So retaining that class two fire rating, uh, sort of unofficially, but we feel very good about that. We feel very good that we are, all signs are pointing to us maintaining that class two rating, which of course only a handful of uh, stations have or departments have throughout the country. And not only being able to retain that rating, but also signs pointing towards us improving upon our score. And so when we do have you know, the official letter that that has come through, we can take a little bit of a look at how the investment in fire department resources, especially through the measure, uh, helped us improve upon that and be more secure in that rating. Okay, so that was public services, uh, or public safety, number one. And number two here, of course, is addressing homelessness. Uh, gladly, we have a lot of things on our completion list here. So 2.2, that is reaching out for further outreach services, and that has to do with the $450,000 that was allocated for contracted services. So that has more or less been allocated to both all of the uh, ADR programs, so the cleanup program downtown, TransWest Security, so that's being overseen by the police department, and also $150,000 allocated to the Homeless Collaborative to help them get on their feet and uh, with some of their administration costs. So 2.2a, 2.3 is the rapid response team. So of course, the rapid response team has been a huge asset. We've had really great response from the community. Hopefully you guys have as well in your wards. And we have a fully staffed team, both for the parks department and for code enforcement. Uh, and they are working seven days a week. And I do have a little bit of detail here. They do weekly reporting and it's great to see those numbers come in just specifically for code enforcement, they've had over 1,000 calls for service, 175 cleanups, 875 cubic yards of trash picked up from all those cleanups, and have made 464 contacts or officer offers of services to people that they encounter. So that's significant, and it's only been a couple of months into the process. And if we kind of think back a little bit, there was a lot of planning that went into making sure that that team hit the ground running. So that, that's been a great accomplishment so far. Uh, going now to 2.4, that's the last two items here that have been complete. 2.4 has to do with the city more fully uh, engaging with the homeless collaborative. So that has been done, an MOU was signed and the city has a seat on that new board of the newly formed structure that they have. As well as 2.4C, that has to do with funding and making sure that we're investing in solutions. And it's a big block, of, big block of writing right there, but it essentially is telling us that we're using our HUD funding. And they're on a, a little bit of a different fiscal year, they're on the federal year, but as of October of this year, we have about $400,000 going out for service providers for homelessness solutions. So that's significant. We also had an RFP go out in October for affordable housing programming, affordable housing development, uh, and that's actually due Friday. So hopefully we'll get a lot of results out of that as well. In addition to that, we have that $5 million set aside from the PSVS funding to go into affordable housing. So those are the things that we felt comfortable. We can probably strike off the list and we've made movement on. These next couple items are things that a lot of work has gone into and we're still in progress on. So 2.1, of course, is increasing shelter capacity. That item, the emergency low barrier shelter development, that will be coming back to you, as you know, in January, the January 22nd meeting, the staff is working on that. The permanent transitional housing development, again, that has to do with the RFP that went out, so we'll have results from that pretty soon. And then the facilitation of two 40-bed expansion projects, that's also underway, and we should have construction starting very soon for uh, those additional beds. 2.2, once again, that's the outreach services. And again, these are things that are in process, not quite complete, but we're very close. Uh, this has to do with the point in time count. So that's coming up very quickly here in January. And city, the city did this last year as well to try and allow staff the flexibility to be a part of that point in time count if possible. But there's a really uh, more concerted effort this year to incentivize that. So there's plans underway to make sure that uh, the city is actively engaged in that count as well. Uh, the last one here again is, is the funding. 
And so we have continued advocacy for state funding to address homelessness. And uh, a, a lot of these items, um, thank you, Mayor Go, for your input on this as well as we know that Mayor Go sits as our representative on, I think it's the big 13 now, the big 13 cities that advocate to the state to make sure that that funding is sustainable. So previously they had the HEAP funding and it was kind of one time emergency funding, but that's now turned into the HHAPP program. I don't know the full acronym, but uh, that group was really successful in making sure that, that the state recognizes we need an ongoing stream and the city should be receiving direct allocation from that as well. So always moving on. So the third goal here is maintaining fiscal solvency. And uh, these two are, are, are happily uh, pretty simple. We have 3.1, I like to say simple, but it's kind of a big lift. 3.1 is not gonna be completed in its full ideation until fiscal year 2025. But for this fiscal year, we are upping both the general fund reserves and the facilities replacement reserves. So general fund is up to $10 million, and we may have further information on that as well. And the facility is up to $2 million. Uh, 3.2 is a look at our internal finances, so finding those strengths and weaknesses, that is also underway. Finance has uh, contracted with GFOA, the Government Finance Officers Association, to help us both look at those internal systems uh, and also look at potentially a new ERP program, so the Enterprise Resource Planning software, so that we can just get, get pretty modern with that. All right, so we have number four, and that's quality of life and public amenities. A lot of this has to do with our parks department. So something that's complete, 4.4, that action item has to do with park security. So there was additional security added to the park patrols three additional patrols. Some things that we've made significant progress on, and you'll see some results from very soon. Uh, tonight, on tonight's agenda, you'll be seeing the recommendation for selection for the design consultant for phase four of Kaiser Permanente Sports Village. Uh, and that's 4.1, which has to do with the city's amenities. 4.2 is the streetscapes action item. So that, of course, has been moving on with their annual tree planting program. So far, we've had 550 trees go in, 7,000 shrubs, and that full program is estimated to be complete uh, May 2020. So 4.3, Bridal Creek Park Development. 4.3 is the focus on neighborhood parks, and that park should be complete next month. So we'll be celebrating that one pretty soon. Uh, moving on to five here, and I'll, I'll make this note for both goals uh, number five and for number eight, which is, it won't look like there's a whole lot on here and a lot of that has to do with, we're still recruiting some positions for the economic development department. So of course we just brought on Chris Boyle and uh, we're excited to have him here as the development services director. And a lot of this work is still moving forward as it is with the staff that we have. And once we have that director, once we have those planners on board, they'll really be able to give the, the, the attention to these action items. So, but what we do have so far right now under 5.1, which has to do with streamlining our processes to help with development, uh, is the implementation of an online process or permitting process. So the building department expects to have that in April of next year and subsequent items will follow that, like staff training. And that came out of a really uh, productive, interactive process with the Home Builders Association and some suggestions that they had for the department. So that is moving forward. And again, and the rest of the items under uh, the fifth goal have to do with uh, economic development or the economic opportunity areas. And so we'll see a lot more movement on those when we get that uh, fully staffed up. All right, number six, enhancing infrastructure. Uh, you'll see that a lot of these dates are, are very soon. So there's a lot of things going, moving very quickly. Uh, a lot of public works projects here. So the Kern River Bridge improvements, we're estimating that'll be completed next month where all that false work will come off. Uh, very cool seeing that project come to fruition from a start to finish. So 6.1, that focuses on the TRIP program. That's what you can expect within the next month. Uh, 6.2, has to do with maintaining our current infrastructure. And so looking at the downtown sewer study that's 
ongoing right now, and we should have that report uh, and should be completed January 2020. So that will also be coming pretty soon. 6.3, that action item has to do with pedestrian and bicycle health, related health outcomes. And so many, many, many millions of dollars worth of applications have gone into CMAC, the Congestion Mitigation and Air Quality Program. Uh, and we anticipate those decisions coming in January 2020. And there's a list of all of those applications in your report as well. 6.4 has to do with the bike and pedestrian safety. So we looked at health and we also looked at safety. And so that study has been ongoing. We got a lot of feedback from the community, which is great. And we should have that final report uh, next month, so very soon. And then the streetlight study, uh, that's also something we'll see some more movement on in the next month where we'll be uh, RFPs gone out and selecting that consultant and pr approving that uh, December of this year. Okay. Number seven, uh, promote community pride, image, and excellent customer service. So some things that have been completed. 7-1-A was a very specific item related to uh, conflict de-escalation training and really opportunities for staff to just further their customer service and get some professional development and grow our human capital. So that has been going on. Our human, human resources department is so busy, but they are really, really creative and they're looking for a lot of ways to do that. Um, and this particular one actually came out of risk management as well. Uh, great training, great training for a lot of our uh, staff that interact with the public on a daily basis. So not only some techniques for them to use when interacting with the public, but also when interacting with your coworkers and each other. So that was uh, pretty creative. I particularly enjoyed that one. And then 7.2 that has to do with marketing Bakersfield. And one of the biggest things that's come out of that, of course, is the branding campaign. So you'll have seen, hopefully, you'll have seen all of the new branding going up all over the city. And our public information officer has done a great job in making sure that that's the face. And it's a very new, clean, modern look. All righty, the last of my highlights here is investing in urban revitalization and downtown development. And this one, again, similar to item number five or goal number five, there's some, a lot of items on here that are dependent on dedicated staff, but a lot of, most of this work is still moving forward regardless. So 8.2, uh, transformative climate communities, and I think this one has to do with the uh, downtown development. Transformative climate communities is the program from the Strategic Growth Council out of the state, and it's focusing on sustainable housing, workforce development, and transit. Uh, and one of our most famous examples we use when referencing this program is Fresno is able to get almost $30 million in development money. Uh, so it's really significant. It'll, and there's a team currently meeting uh, to help come up with ideas and make sure that we make the most of this opportunity for Bakersfield. So within the next two years, uh, I don't believe we're doing the next application cycle, but the one after that, we'll be hoping to also apply for that opportunity. 8.4a, the General plan update is also underway. So I know that there has been uh, exploration into the consultants who will help decide what path the city takes when updating the next general plan. So that is also ongoing. And again, the rest of the items, you'll see more detail in your report. Uh, excited to see them come online as we get more staff. And that's it for my highlights. Again, this was more of an, an informational pulse check for council of what has been uh, happening so far. Uh, not recommending any additional action tonight other than to receive and file, but did want to make a note that we are starting into our next, next budget cycle. So it's appreciated to have that direction to give to the departments when they're coming up with their proposals. So if you have any more measurable action item type goals that you'd like staff to be considering, um, not just things within the next year, maybe some more a little bit long term, that would be good information for us to collect. And we'll be bringing another update of these goals, of course, closer to the end of the fiscal year. So that's all I have, and I'd be happy to take any questions. Thank you, Ms. Carrier. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Well, everybody knows we're trying to figure out one of the pieces of the puzzle uh, with a homeless shelter, but what this presentation shows, all of the good works, all of the hard work that city staff has done, the city manager's office, our stakeholders, and the council. And I just want to thank everybody for a job well done. 
Thank you. Councilmember Freeman. Um, thanks, Brianna. That was a good report. Um, I just have a, a few questions. I had to write pretty quickly as we, <laughs> as we move through there. But um, with regard to the uh, police hiring, how, about how many officers do we lose each year through, through attrition generally, but you know, retirement, people quitting, people transferring? But how many do we have to replace, I mean, add just to the, replace the ones we lose, kind of an average? Chris, may need help from you. Uh, it varies, but in the vicinity of 20, I believe. Is that in the ballpark? Yes, uh, Honorable Mayor, Councilmember Freeman. Uh, it, it does vary year to year. Uh, the last year, I know that we were very close to authorized complement. Uh, but yeah, somewhere along the lines of, of 20 or so, depending on the year. Um, but the, the positions that are reflected in the academy are measure uh, funded positions. Yeah, I just wondered we, <clears throat> if we get 30 from the academy, we really have to get 50 because we, I mean, if we want to hit our schedule, we have that uh, natural attrition. There's probably some curve on retirement that someone can do just as people are reaching and, that, retirement. and that's one of the things that our human resources and police department take into consideration when they're looking at filling academy slots. Mm -hmm. uh, they do look at anticipated retirements and they do look at anticipated need and fill to that point to essentially take into consideration um, trying to get those mm -hmm. slots in totality filled uh, as, as the academies occur. What's the capacity of each training class? That's a good question. I believe that is somewhat related to the facility and post. It's certified for 50. Yeah. Up to, I'm sorry? It's certified for 50. Okay. Cadets. Okay. Uh, another question. Uh, we talked about affordable housing. We have some RFPs out. What are the RFPs for? I mean, what, exactly what kinds of projects? Are these to build new housing, subsidize? I, I, I'd like to know um, what precisely types of projects that we're looking for. Um, we own um, a property uh, in the Baker Street area and we're dealing with uh, the Cesar Chavez Foundation uh, on the potential for an affordable housing project there. Uh, we are dealing uh, with uh, the Montezuma Sparza group, who's the developer of the Maya Cinemas, on a combined housing and commercial development on our PQ Street property. Um, you're awfully new, but if you want to add, feel free. Right now, when we talk about the RFPs, there is a, a lot of money in the, in the stream coming down uh, from the state of California. The SB2 grant that we just will be submitting today or tomorrow provides for various programs that will implement, that will in turn uh, stimulate the creation of more affordable housing and for that matter, accelerated housing opportunities. Um, th it's a, a good point in, in connecting um, city manager Tandy's statement as it relates to um, working on partnerships because working in partnerships, oftentimes we need to find pots of money to make all those projects work. Uh, one of the uh, one of the components of our SB2 grant proposal would be to um, form uh, an affordable housing pot of money that we could then look to partnership with other firms in in accelerating uh, the construction of affordable housing. Other components look at providing streamlined opportunities for uh, accessory dwelling units and things along those lines. So it takes a little bit of time to set the table but we'd like to think that um, in the very near future, a lot of those programs will come online and we'll start to see additional housing come out of the ground. So these are new build opportunities to build new things. That's correct. As, as a note, we talked briefly about affordable housing in a workshop last week and one of the questions had to do with uh, HUD vouchers. And um, in response to that, we talked about how the HUD vouchers are available but the homes that they could be utilized within, that's where we have a shortfall. So we're looking to create those partnerships so that those projects can be developed. Okay. Um, I have a question for Mr. Tandy. Have we made any progress on the analysis that um, I'd asked for a while ago on kind of quantifying this gap of the unfunded liability 
for our pensions and how kind of how long it'll take as the curve goes up, how big it is and how it comes down, just some quantification of that gap and maybe how big it is in five-year intervals. Just, I continue to get be a little frustrating on knowing, well, is it peaked yet or does it continue to grow and when does this natural curve come back down? So it, is it 450 million? Is it gonna grow to 600 or is it starting to, we don't really have a handle on it until we know what it is. I don't think we can effectively think of strategies that we might dream up to bring it down, but I do think we need to kind of know, well, how much is it and is it still growing or is it gonna peak soon? And then over the years, as the classic people retire and we have more of the new people in the new program, how's this thing gonna come down? It's, with respect, it's the biggest liability. <laughs> with respect to retiree health liability, we get an actuary done uh, every two years. And I believe that is not far away. Uh, the most recent update on that and that actually does um, uh, an actu actuarial calculation of where we are, where we're going, when we'll be paid off, and it's, and it's quite precise. Uh, with CalPERS, uh, the problem um, is that the rules constantly change, and so uh, today uh, there is one answer. Uh, they adopt a new calculation or actuarial model, mm -hmm. and there's another answer. They change their um, Estimated lifetime uh, of average uh, men and women calculation to reflect um, higher levels than were uh, in place, and that changes the numbers. We really uh, probably don't go a year when uh, it isn't altered. Mm -hmm. um, and we can get you. Um, today's uh, calculation of that. Yeah, I mean, but if you just make, but it, it make some assumptions yeah. that the return rate will stay the same, they won't change the tables and just, I'm really looking for the broad overview. If you make a bunch of assumptions, then it's kind of ballpark, you know. How big will this thing, I, if you came back, I, for example, you might come back and say it's gonna be 900 million. Well, I would have gone, really? I didn't know that, I thought just about peak. So, I just feel as the council, we have to have some idea. Do we, will time solve the problem in how many years, or is it, is it gonna get, do you think it'll be much worse than we think? I just feel like I, I don't understand the timeline on this, and I just think I would like to know, what are we dealing with? We can get you a snapshot answer under today's criteria. Okay, thank you. I can have one final note, perhaps. Um, can deal with that later. Oh, on the um, transformative, transformative climate communities that Fresno managed to get $30 million to do something with their downtown, I guess. Um, how do we generate the ideas for what we might do? Is, I mean, is that even started or is there a workshop? But if you say, gee, we'd love to do a revamp a lot of it on town or even even to do a brand new master plan for downtown but if are there grants available and uh, have we have we gotten into that yet thank you council member freeman i'll take that answer uh, right now we we are in the process of uh, finalizing selection of a consultant to work with us on our tcc grant uh, within that grant we'll uh, that consultant will prepare market analysis sites inventories uh, a SWOT and look to identify uh, those targets of opportunity that will allow us to then move forward with tangible projects. So right now we're in the table setting mode, um, but um, like many grants that we're processing right now, um, but from that we should have information to move with purpose. Uh, okay, well I would be interested in some updates as that moves along. Justin, what are you thinking of? I mean, what? A lot, a lot of people approach me and, and they say, well, what's kind of the vision, which is generally as a real estate guy, I think of it's a colored map, looks like a master plan, all this is gonna happen here and there, and we don't really have, we have something to do with the high-speed rail station, but that really isn't, it's kind of way, way out there. It's not, it's not a plan for what we think of as downtown, 
the core of it and you know are there things we can do to revitalize this with new development down here or, I don't know walking mall pedestrian but just the ideas that would be nice which does need a good analysis like you're describing but that we finally put some meat on the bones and start you know hypothesizing some different scenarios Councilmember Freeman, we are looking at transportation elements uh, as part of the program as well. Uh, pedestrian corridors, bi uh, bicycle corridors, enhancements to the transportation network system in the downtown to get accessibility in and out for all modes of transportation. Also working with the transit agencies as well. So those are components of the TCC grant um, as well. Well, the, the reason I say we need, I hate to say we need some pretty pictures. But if we, you know, we try to bring people to a shopping center, we design a beautiful shopping center, we go to uh, the, the Las Vegas show, and we try to sell. <laughs> if we want to bring developers into our downtown and some big money someday into our downtown, we've got to have something to sell. And it is a, it's a vision. It's something that you can see. I know it'll change a thousand times, but you have something that you're trying to attract people to. It's like a giant real estate project. And I just someday like to see us develop something like that. Council Member Freeman, you're, you're right. Um, in addition, Mr. Boyle, as you said, we have several grants that we're kicking off for the TCC in particular. We did actually just have uh, a kickoff meeting with our new consultant. Uh, we hired Dudak, which is a very well regarded firm to be our consultant through that project. And they're laying out and piecing together, as Mr. Boyle indicated, a very comprehensive plan that will include updates to your council, community outreach meetings, visioning process, okay. so that we can get all of the players in the room uh, at the same table to lay out what that vision should be. And then we will be moving forward with that. We'll bring uh, updates back to the council in a workshop format, if you'd like, on how that's going uh, and to get input and buy-in from the council. And all of this will also inform the future general plan update, which will have that specific plan element that we've talked about that will really lay out the specific details of what we want to do for the broader downtown uh, as a whole. Okay. Thank you. Councilmember Smith. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to uh, say a feedback that I've had from the community on, on what we've done and what you talked about, the rapid response teams, the, the cleanup, and the, the additional security has been very positive, and, and people are seeing a difference, and it's appreciated. So thank you. thank you. Thank you. I don't see any other requests to speak, so thank you very much, Ms. Carrier. Thank you for your hard work and for your team's hard work. Thank you. And now, uh, next item, please. Madam oh, yes, Mayor. we need a motion to receive and file. Uh, Thank you, Mayor. Motion to receive and file. Motion, please cast your votes. Motion is approved. Thank you. Next item, please. We have a, an announcement regarding the workshop item. There's a staff memorandum that was received regarding item 3A, transmitting a report of department activity updates to complement the city council goals update presentation. Next item, under closed session, a conference with legal counsel, existing litigation regarding Magali um, Arias et al versus Stephen Donald Brewster, City of Bakersfield. Adjourned to closed session. We're adjourned to closed session, 405.